Hi guys, this is Philip from Reamp, and as promised in my last video, today we are going to make our own cyberpunk inspired katana. Since I had an old decorative katana lying around and gathering dust, I thought why not just give it a proper cyberpunk themed overhaul to put it back up on my prop wall. That was actually something I had intended for quite a while, but never got around to do. But let's get to it. First of all, like with all my designs, I started with a simple sketch that I used as a reference for modeling. I had found an interesting design on Pinterest that depicted a katana-like design with an implemented gun. While I did not want to go for the gun part, I liked the overall shape and took inspiration from there. Then, for everyone watching my other modeling videos, I started modeling the shapes by drawing splines according to my outline sketch. This way I can quickly work around all the different parts of this build. And since most of this refit is fairly two-dimensional, it's also the most effective way. For the grip of the katana, I used the Tsumitoi from Cyberpunk 2077 as reference. Unlike for regular katana, the tsuba in this case is not a separate piece, but rather makes a smooth transition into the actual grip. And spoiler, when I first held the katana in my hand, that actually felt quite good. Somehow it seemed I had a better grip on the sword. But that aside, I continued to model all the small details, again by using splines, or in some simple cases, adjusting some basic geometric objects like boxes and cylinders. It's really straightforward, so I'm not going into too much detail on that. In my 3D design I initially worked out a red and black paint job, which I later didn't use. That's however something I regret and will most likely change again. For actually combining my model with the katana I had, I went ahead and prepared my model as a kind of shell that I would be able to glue onto the saya or scabbard. Once I had my 3D prints finished, I glued the parts together and test fitted everything. That is also a very important part. If you start to paint and then find out you have to change something, you might ruin your paint job. But once everything worked out, it was time again for sanding and filling. It took several layers of filling with putty and sanding again until I got it as smooth as intended. That's always a tedious task, but if you want to have a nice result, you can't avoid it. On a side note, I recently saw some videos using resin for SLA printers to smooth FDM prints. And I actually want to try that on another model soon. For now, however, I went ahead with the regular method. With the sanding completed, it was time for the paint job. Now I made the mistake to go with a black and bluish paint. It still looks nice, however it somehow did not feel like it would still fit into the universe of Cyberpunk 2077. After applying some masking tape and finishing up some detail with a rubber black paint job for some grip parts, I could go ahead with my final task detail painting and a super quick weathering job. I basically just painted the text indents with a white acrylic paint and added a short oil wash. As a final step, I took some black PC screws and added them to the model where it made sense. Which brings me to the final point of today's video. Even if you don't like certain colors, if you want to make a believable prop that goes with an established aesthetic of a game or movie, don't be afraid to use colors other than black, gray, etc. This one is, as I said, not what I actually intended. It still looks decent, but in this case I should have gone with a brighter color. Maybe it doesn't have to be red, but a bright bluish color similar to the one I used for the Quasar build might do the trick. And that's it for today's video. This was, of course, a very fast build. I just had to add some things and repaint the old katana. But I'd also be very interested to hear if you like how this turned out. That being said, there are some mistakes I made. You usually don't store or don't display a katana this way. 
you would do it like that. Let's just say in the future it's maybe different whatsoever. So I'll give you one tip that I should have considered myself before actually making this. If you want to make something that deals with tradition or um, certain storing ways or something like that, always make a bit of research before you actually do it. Not, not like me, make it later and find out you did it wrong. That's not working very good. Anyway, if you've enjoyed, then please subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell and see you next time.